right, hello wine drinking people. Today is Friday, September 24th. Just finishing out another great week here at the Wine Watch. And um, we got a nice week coming up next week. Three events on Thursday night and our vintage Spanish tasting on Friday. We're going all the way back to 1942. Second year of World War II. Marques de Murieta y Gay. Grand Reserve Especial. Uh, and we've got two other vintages of that. We have got 1970 Vega Sicilia Unico and several other wines. Check it out. It's up on our website on the calendar of events. Everything in the menu is up there as well. All right. Well, what I had to drink yesterday. Yesterday was a busy day in the store. We had three suppliers and some pretty good stuff. You know, it's kind of ironic. We just sent out an offer on Louis Jadot, and bam, the export director for Louis Jadot shows up in the shore, the, the store the next day. I don't know how they worked that out, but it happened. Uh, and uh, we got to try some great stuff, 2009 Beaujolais. This is a vintage that has been touted as being the greatest vintage ever in Beaujolais. Hey, George DeBuff said it. Must be true. Louis Latour said it. He said, cited George DeBuff. He goes, hey, I can say it. George DeBuff said it. And uh, Mark said it also. Our export director was in yesterday, and we got to try four crew Beaujolais. Outstanding. But first... I had a, uh, some wines from a property in Puy Fusay that I'd never tried before. And uh, this winery supposedly has been the leader in this area for a long time. One of the cuvées we had, they've been making for 40 years. And I didn't realize within Puy Fusay, there's an actual area called Fusay, which is considered the best area uh, within Puy Fusay. And Puy Fusay, for me, is one of the most overpriced wines from the Côte de Chalonnais. Puy Fusay, because it's become so popular, some people jokingly call the wine Fussy Pussy, and um, you find a lot of stuff that is somewhat overpriced and overrated. This winery, however, was not. A lot of these wines tasted like fine burgundies from the Cote de Bone. All right, first up, we just had their Puy Fusé, uh, 2008 vintage. And uh, this, the grapes for this wine come from the actual climate of Fuise. Like I mentioned before, they do have several vineyards in this area. And similar, the soils are similar to uh, uh, Merceau or Pellini rather than uh, Puy, the rest of uh, Puy Fuise. A ni nicely focused bouquet of lemon citrus. A little bit of this chalky minerality, limestone kind of note to it. And uh, wonderful intensity on the palate with uh, that steely minerality showing again through the finish. Very elegant, very long for a Puy Fuise. One of the best Puy Fuse's that I've ever had. The, the Puy Fusé Le Perrier, Tête de Cuvée, was next. Um, now, the production on these next two wines is 150 cases. Tiny production, just a few barrels of each of these. The Tête de Cru is what this vineyard is referred to. It's a 2.5 hectare south-facing vineyard. Uh, has the best exposure of all their vineyards. Light, flinty, kind of wet stone minerality on the nose here. Excellent intensity of green apple, lemon citrus fruit, and uh, wonderful intensity again on the palate with uh, great freshness and gives you the impression of effervescence, the minerality in this wine. It gives you a little tingling on your tongue, uh, but very long, very intense, and uh, again, the best Puy Fusé that I've ever tasted. All right, next up we had the Tournant de Puy, Cuvée Horse Class, and uh, this is a little di different vineyard site. Uh, <clears throat> Colovian soils here, similar, similar to those found in Batard Montrachet, kind of a blue uh, hint to the soil because of the uh, volcanic nature. But uh, this wine, very precise, very focused on the tongue, racy, more refined, those chocolate minerally notes, again, very Pellini Folatera like on the nose, great underlying acidity, lemon zest, and a long finish. A bit tart right now, you can tell this wine has got some intensity that needs to resolve, uh, and, but it has wonderful balance, and with a couple years time, it is going to be Fabulous. All right, next up are the Cru Beaujolais. And uh, these four wines from Jadot, well, I'm sorry, they took Jadot off the label. Chateau de Jacques, another property that is uh, controlled by Jadot, uh, making some fabulous wines. And I've had 10, 15 year old versions of Cru Beaujolais that taste like old burgundies. These 09s are wines that need a little time. Very intensely focused fruit on the palate, wonderful acidity, and great tannic structure. This wine had lovely blackberry, black cherry fruit with lovely floral notes, very bright and attractive bouquet, a bit edgy. I don't know how Mark described them, but I didn't find the wine edgy at all. But um, lovely blackberry and black cherry fruit with firm tannins on the palate, lovely floral notes, a zesty finish, a really long, exceptional Crew Beaujolais, Morgon. Chateau de Jacques Moulin Avant was up next, a little bit bigger, almost a sun dried quality to the black cherry, black plum fruit on the nose. Slight animal, sauvage character to this wine. Silky smooth tannins on the tongue. Still big and nicely concentrated and wonderful freshness. This wine needs a bit of time, a little bit dry on the finish. Uh, very nice though. Moulin Avant, Claude de Ruchgris. 
and uh, Rochegrasse, and this wine, it's got a little bit of carbonic, uh, which is a lot of wines in Beaujolais use the technique called carbonic maceration, which makes the wine forward and fruity and really easy to drink when young. However, it robs the wine of some of its ageability. So they do use a little bit of this technique, but most, for the most part, these wines are made like a fine red from the Cote de Nuit, and this wine was I mean, it had all that and a box of chocolates. It was uh, just big and intense, this light, smoky, toasty uh, note from the 100% new oak they got here. Black raspberry, roasted plum kind of notes, seductive spice, lovely floral notes. Uh, very fine and elegant on the palate, very long, and uh, again, this wine needs a little time. Most excellent, one of the best Cru Beaujolais I've ever had. And then next up was the Morgon Cote de Pie, and uh, this is a wine that uh, Mami San also makes when we had the 2006 vintage of Mami San's Beaujolais Cote de Pie on Wednesday night. Uh, P means, uh, well, it's on the edge of an ancient volcano. Again, you get that blue uh, soil here, a bit smoky with syrupy kind of black cherry-like fruit, espresso, light roasted notes, exotic spices, again, similar to a Cote de Nuit, big and chewy on the tongue, firm tannins, wonderful acidity, a little slight balsamic note on the finish, excellent. All right, next up, we had uh, Andre Tamarin from Domaine's Selections, uh, De Maison Selections, rather, sorry, Andre. Uh, this is a uh, so young gentleman make, that has some wonderful wines from Spain, some really interesting stuff, one of the best selection of sherries. Uh, that I've ever had, and chocolate. Hey, man, you're the king of two things that are not very popular in this world, but some other really interesting wines as well. We're going to do a tasting with Andre in October, so you, our wine-drinking people, can check out his wines. First up, we had a nice little Cava, all organically grown from Macabeo and Charlo grape. Uh, really nice floral notes, a little hint of sea salt. Uh, Cava, if made properly, can be a great alternative for an inexpensive sparkling wine, not just something that you put in orange juice and make into a mimosa. Uh, this was a nice little wine. Then up we had uh, some whites, a white from Rita, the Garcia Ravallo, Casamaro. Uh, this wine was pretty nice, a little Vallura in the blend, but uh, some grassy notes, some sea salt again, light uh, lemon and grapefruit citrus, a very refreshing style, uh, all stainless steel, very clean on the finish, very fresh, leaves the tongue salivating for food, as did the next wine, the Gadeo Valedoras from A Cora. Uh, some lovely lime citrus fruit to this, a little bit of honey, whetstone minerality, all organic farming here as well. Man, it's amazing. You can find fifteen to twenty dollar wines that are hundred percent organically produced, and even some ten dollar wines. You don't have to buy mass produced crap to get a good bottle of wine. All right. Next up, we had a Rioja from Mencos. Uh, this is a uh, real hot to me. The Tempranillo grape has this lovely wild strawberry jam-like fruit to it. Ripe, seductive, a little hint of raw meat, some sweet tobacco spice, some fresh earth. And these are classic style wines. Andre focuses on wines that are classically produced. So not over-the-top fruit bombs, overly oaked wines. Uh, very classic style Rioja, really nice little wine at 17 and a quarter. And then up the Vigna Sastre, Ribeiro del Duero. This is one of the top properties, new properties in Ribeiro. They started in 1992, and uh, this is the introductory wine. We had their top wine in a top-level Spanish tasting we did a few months ago, the Pesos. Wow killer. And this is a great little value too. This is a light smoky note to the nose. Again, that wild strawberry jam-like fruit forward and seductive and a little bit of raw steak in this as well as some fresh plowed earth. 100% Tempranillo or guess what? Organic and biodynamically produced. Um, really nice round fruit on the tongue. Great freshness. Um, really nice balanced Rivero del Duero. Very nice. Next up we had the uh, Astatao Another wine that's hard to pronounce from Rioja, but uh, another classic style Rioja wine. Very nice at 24 bucks. And then the Condes de Hervias. And this is a new style Rioja, one of the only new style wines uh, that Andres got. Pre Phylloxera Vineyard, 98% Tempranillo with just a touch of Graciano and uh, uh, Garnacha, which is a field blend. They harvest it all together. 80% new French oak. You really notice the toasty oak spice in this wine. Some lovely floral characters from this. Some black cherry, wild strawberry fruit, fresh and jammy, much bigger than the other wines. Some soy, some Asian spice, really exotic. Really nice bottle of wine, most excellent, but $78 priced accordingly as well from a great vintage, 04 in Rioja. All right, well, last in the store, we had Anthony Pannoni from the Florida Wine Company, and all of his stuff is excellent. 
and as were these five wines. Very nice stuff. The Artisuri Grenache right here. We still got a little left. If you guys are thirsty, you want to come in the store and check it out. Uh, really nice little value. It's a twelve dollars and fifty cents, man. It's amazing what you can get from Spain in this ten dollar price range. And this wine is from Navarra, just to the east of Rioja. Um, Really nice, sweet Grenache, fresh berry pie-like fruit. Pretty simple, some balsamic and floral notes in the finish, but a real crowd-pleaser style. The Cantini Valpine, Valpain Barbera, also a real crowd-pleaser. This is the essence of Barbera. Dark spices, a little tar, black earth, and lovely black cherry, blackberry fruit in the nose. Aged in tank, and uh, like I said, really nice, light, fresh, easy drinking wine. Fifteen seventy-five. This wine will be in the store next week if you want to check it out. I'm always looking for great value, Barbera. Next up, the Cesti, Cesti Rosa de Montalcino. Uh, this wine is nice, but a little bit expensive for what it was. You know, I, I'm expecting Val de Cava Rosso at $36, but a nice little wine and classically uh, a classic style Rosso de Montalcino as well. And then a little Banshee Pinot Noir, uh, which is a label that Anthony's got that makes some really nice Pinots blended from different appellations in the $20 price range. Really nice little wine. And you know I'm having wine with dinner. Last night, Tony cooked one of my favorites, Pork Penang. The perfect wine with Pork Penang? Beer. Unfortunately, I didn't have any. So I decided to finish off the bottle of Aligote that we opened up here. That was the subject of our email yesterday from D. Lane. Awesome stuff, wonderful acidity, Penang, too spicy for Aligote. Then I went to the uh, Bone Premier Cru Clos de Roi, which is right here. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> that wine, also overwhelmed by the spice. But after I finished my Penang, both of the wines, excellent. We had the Clos de Roi at our tasting on Wednesday night. And that's what I had to drink last night, folks. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.